Oh, mate, this is living. I am in heaven right now. This place is bloody gorgeous. Yes, yes. And what a gorgeous fish. Colors and the patterns on him, absolutely stunning. that dingo there is also one of the the valley. Oh, all right, well, the wild weather has finally hit me. Well, g'day guys and thanks again for joining me. So I'm back out in the beautiful snowy mountains on a very wet and drizzly weekend. It's probably not the best <laughs> weekend to come out here, but I thought I'd give it my best shot and um, yeah, try and push through the rain. But yeah, it's meant to be raining for the next three days. So it's gonna make things pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm out here for three days and two nights. So um, the plan is to do a little bit of fishing. I've got the fly rod with me. Um, so within luck, I might be able to catch ourselves a little trout for dinner. But we've had a lot of rain and also with the snow melt over the last month or two, there's a fair bit of water moving through this river and it's pretty churned up. So we'll have to see how we go with the old fishing, um, but we'll give it my best shot. But tonight I'm gonna make my way up um, to this historic hut and stay up there tonight, which should be um, yeah, really cool. And then yeah, tomorrow we'll do a fair bit of fishing down the river and um, yeah, find camp a little bit further down the river somewhere. So I think it should be a really good little weekend, even though it's raining, it's still bloody gorgeous to be out here in the snowy mountains. Honestly, just look at that landscape. It's absolutely spectacular. So. Yeah, really stoked to be out here. How about we um, yeah, grab the rod and we'll go for a bit of a fish. Well, got a bit of a pause in the rain, which is nice because man, it has not let up, eh? And trying to film in the rain is so difficult. I've got a little uh, rain cover for my camera, but it still gets pretty wet. So yeah, yeah not the funnest, but um, it's about 4.30. So it's getting pretty late in the day. I sort of didn't um, leave my car till about 2.30. It's a bit, of, yeah, a bit of a trek to get down here. Like, yeah, easily seven hours. Uh, I was meant to go to another spot as well, but I ended up bailing on that and coming to this spot. So yeah, it's a bit of a run around this morning, so. Yeah, a bit later start than I would have liked. Um, but given that it's 4.30, got a, yeah, a couple of hours till it gets dark. But I'm not really having much luck with the fishing. Uh, I'm gonna have a little bit more of a go, just a little bit further up here. But after that, I think I might um, yeah, make my way up to this hut and um, yeah, try and get set up with camp and stuff before it gets uh, too dark and too cold. So I'll have a few more casts and we'll make my way up there. All right, so for those interested, I'm just using a little dry dropper set up. It's got a little Royal Wolf dry and I'm not actually quite sure what kind of nymph this is, but yeah, that's what I'm running. So, see how we go. All right, well, the rain's back. It's getting pretty late, I'm starting to get pretty cold. So I think it's about time we can get um, caught quits in the fishing and we'll make our way up to the hut.
Man, even in the rain, this place is absolutely stunning, eh? Oh, so bloody beautiful. Having all the mist sort of lift off the trees and off the mountains. This big, beautiful open country as well. So nice to walk through. And then all these massive uh, yeah, granite outcrops just dotted around the landscape. Oh, I'm absolutely loving today. Eh? Like when I woke up this morning and I saw how wet it was outside, I thought it'd be horrible down here. But to be honest, there is no way I'd rather be right now. Eh? Oh, I absolutely love this, uh, this kind of landscape. So stoked, <laughs> so stoked. She looks a bit like the little haunted house on the hill. Not a bad spot to uh, yeah, pull up stumps for tonight, I reckon. This is a really cool little hut. Oh man, it feels really nice to get out of that rain finally, eh? So what's so good about having these high country huts sort of dotted around the landscape is, yeah, if you get stuck out in bad weather, yeah, you can um, yeah, seek some refuge and shelter, which is pretty important, especially if you get stuck out in like, se like severe weather, like in the middle of winter and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I love about these things, like, such an awesome part about our history, about our culture, like these, I think this was built in the early 1900s, maybe like around 1910 or something. I'm sure it's got it somewhere, I'll have to have a bit of a read in a moment, but um, yeah, a lot of these huts are well over 100 years old and it's really nice to see them sort of, yeah, still exist. A bunch got burnt out with the fires a couple of years ago, but I think the National Parks released a thing the other day saying they're gonna rebuild them, which is great. So it's good to see, uh, yeah, these huts are gonna yeah, continue for many years to come. Anyway, let's get the pack off. We'll have a little look around. Up here, we've got the, the dunny. Oh man, what a view. Not a bad spot for a dunny. <laughs> Just got a little room here, which I'm gonna guess is probably where the firewood's kept. Bingo, perfect. Some saws, plenty of firewood. That's so good, because <laughs> everything's a little bit wet out there at the moment, so. That is very handy. Well, that rain is well and truly set in, eh? I'm so stoked that I've got this to seek some refuge in. It is very wet out there. And it's so still. Apart from the sound of the rain on the tin roof, there's a little bird that chirps every now and then, but Apart from that, it's very still. Such a beautiful landscape, hey. Just looking out over these grassy plains with like the the trees on the hills. There's kangaroos like honestly everywhere, eh? I wonder if we'll get any brumbies up here. Apparently you get wild dogs around here, which when I was driving in, uh, I did see a, I think it might've been a dingo. It was very light in color. It's pretty white, but I think it might've been the maybe dingo cross wild dog, but. I've heard you get a few of them around here, so it's just to see yeah, what happens tonight. 
but it's probably about time we get some warmer clothes on, maybe get the fire going, because I'm getting pretty damn cold, eh? I think it's about, there's a thermometer there, it says about 8 degrees or something at the moment, but I'm just wet, so let's go get some warmer clothes on, eh? Alright, so for tonight's dinner, I've got some lamb chops with some mint jelly, some broccolini, and then this which I haven't had before. It's a pumpkin and sweet potato mash, so yeah, keen to see how it goes. So let's get this on the fire. Oh, that looks bloody good. Alright, so for this mashed potato, just gonna add some milk powder just to this boiling water. And we'll just add the mashed potato. And just a nice dollop of butter. Lastly, we'll just add some mint jelly to the lamb chops. If you've never had mint jelly on lamb, you guys are missing out. It is so bloody tasty. Well, there you go. A nice hearty dinner for a nice cold night. So, I'm very keen to get stuck into this.
man. I could sit here all day in the sun just looking at this landscape. It is so beautiful. Just watching like the weather change as well. The clouds move across it. It's really nice. So many kangaroos around as well. There's like hundreds. You'll see them bouncing all over these grassy plains. It's really cool to watch. Yeah, nice little sunrise to wake up to. Just laying in the swag, just looking at it at sunrises. Definitely a nice way to start your morning. We well, yeah, decided to just roll the, the swag out of the balcony last night. Because um, with these huts, yeah, technically not allowed to stay inside of them. Um, it's sort of a, for emergencies only. But you are allowed to have a fire and cook up inside, which I did. Um, but yeah, just the fact that I sort of bought a tarp and a bivy with me this trip. And there's no real trees around this hut, unfortunately. So, And uh, also the fact that I got here pretty late last night. Sort of like around what, 6 or 6.30 I got here. So it's pretty late to start setting up and um, pretty wet and cold as well. So... I figured I'd just roll the, yeah, the swag out in the balcony. It's not going to do much damage just sitting out on the balcony. So it's kind of toe on the line there, but I think it was all right given the circumstances. Um, anyway, so it's about 8 o'clock now. So I might start packing my stuff up pretty soon. And I might go for a little bit of a wander um, just behind this hut as well. Apparently there's meant to be some gravestones I think I was reading. So I might go see if I can try and find that. And um, after that, we'll grab the rod and we'll go down for a fish. So I reckon what I might do is I might just get, keep all my mat and my sleeping bag inside of it and just roll it up and then probably just chuck in my bag rather than sort of rolling them up individually. Yeah, so that's it all rolled up. So that's the Corinthia Bivy with all my sleep gear rolled up inside. So a nice little compact swag. And I just chuck that in the bottom of the bag. When I get to camp tonight, I can just roll that straight out and pretty much jump in. Yeah, nice and handy. Well, much better weather today. It's obviously pretty overcast, which is I'm not complaining about. It's actually quite nice to keep that sun off here. It's a little bit windy though, but at least it's not raining. So hopefully it stays like that. But I think it's meant to rain a little bit later on. So hopefully we can get a yeah some decent fishing before then. We'll see how we go. But yeah, just for those who are wondering. And what I'm running the fly set up, so it's got a dry dropper rig set up. So it's got a, a Royal Wolf as a dry, this little nymph running underneath it. Now, when I uh, stopped into the fly shop in Jindy yesterday, uh, the boy said that this time of year is probably not the best to come up and fish this river. He goes, like, with all the snow melt and the rain recently, it's um, a little bit churned up and pretty fast flowing. I also ran into a, a boy yesterday who actually watches the channel. He was saying that it's yeah, you probably should be fishing worms um, after all this rain, but I don't have any worms on me, so I'm just gonna have to give it a go with this. We'll just uh, try and persist. Um, but all I wanna do is just catch one today, and I'll be pretty stoked with that. So we'll give it a best shot. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. This little hole here looks like the perfect spot. You've got some nice gentle current and then uh, this nice deep sort of pool that should pull up any food. But fortunately I've had a few casts and there's absolutely nothing that wants to take my fly. It's a bit of a shame.
spot we're on. Oh, very nice. Let's not lose him. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so close. Ah, oh, damn it. I think it might have been a, a brown trout. Oh, bloody hell. So close. Well, I've changed up the fly, so I'm hoping this, um, yeah, this one's going to start producing the goods now. All right, well, it's about quarter past one, so I'm just going to have a quick bite to eat. And then we'll make our way further down the river. I haven't been having much luck with the fishing this morning, unfortunately. It's been pretty slow. Apart from those two, um, two strikes and that one hookup I got, nothing else, which is, yeah, pretty frustrating. Um, I really wish I caught that fish, eh? It was such a... A nice size, eh? Probably would have been a perfect eating fish tonight. So I'd love to try and yeah, cook one up tonight if I could. I've never yeah, done a catch and cook with trout. I've actually never even eaten wild caught trout, so very keen to try it. But at this rate, I don't think I'll be eating much, eh? Um, but anyway, well, um, I'll have some lunch and then we'll get back walking. So I've still got a fair distance till uh, I get to the area where I want to set up camp. But to be honest, there's so many great spots around here. Like, just look at this, eh? It's like a parkland. So. We spot for choice in terms of camping options, so I think um, yeah, priority will be trying to catch a fish. So, anyway, have some lunch, and I'll get back to you guys in a bit. So, I just got talking to a couple of fishermen, and they just got back from um, yeah, fishing this section of the river. That I'm about to go to, and uh, they were using the spin rod, so they're using like lures and little spinners. And uh, they said they caught about 15 fish, which is yeah, pretty nice, eh? Um, I'm struggling to catch one, <laughs> but yeah, they said that I might have a little bit of a difficult time with the fly rod this trip just because all the rain we've had, it seems like all the fish are eating, um, yeah, worms and bugs and things like that. Um, so we'll see how we go, but yeah, I've spoken to a few people now, and they've all said that I might struggle with the fly rod, so yeah, I'll have to um, yeah, give it our best shot, but we'll see how we go. Well, I just had a, another little fish grab the fly, but he was tiny, so <laughs> it's not even really worth counting as such a small little fish. But yeah, he uh, shook the fly off. Today is just not my day, eh? Like this should be absolutely perfect for the trout, which I'm sure there's a bunch hiding in there, but they just do not want my flies. All right, so just changed up to a little woolly bugger, just to try something different. So we'll see how that goes. Oh wow, there's just a platypus out there. There's a platypus just there. He just went under. Wow, that's really cool. All right, well, I don't think today's my day, unfortunately. I've been fishing for so bloody long and, oh, just barely a bite, hey. So, I think it's time to call it. Um, it's about four o'clock now, so, it's about time you, um, you're trying to find a camp. Looks like I've got some pretty dark clouds moving in as well. I think there was forecast for a potential thunderstorm a bit later. So, yeah, I think it's about time we uh, call quits for the fishing and we'll go find a campsite. I'm very keen to sit down and relax a bit because I'm absolutely buggered. <laughs> And there are brumbies everywhere up on this plane. 
have to be probably about, I don't know, 40 or 50 just around from what I can see. Now I know as much of a, a pest as they are, they're still pretty majestic to see in this landscape, eh? But in saying that, they definitely make wild camping a little bit sketchy. Um, because obviously I like to tuck amongst the trees and stuff, but I just had this thought of a bunch of Brumbies running me over in the middle of the night. I just hope they have a good night vision. <laughs> so, I remember last time I was up in the um, snowies and I was staying next to a hut in my tent, I could hear the Brumbies walking around the tent at night and it made me feel very uneasy. So, yeah, something I definitely got to consider. So I'm not quite sure what to do. Um, I'll have a little bit of a look around and yeah, see, see what's going to make the best camp. Well, I've been staying for about 15 minutes trying to figure out what to do, but I think I've come to a decision. Um, I think I might try and camp up on top of this hill here. Um, number one, the view is just unbelievable. It's so nice. I just think, yeah, watching sunset and sunrise from up here is just going to be really something special. Um, but the other reason is the fact that I've got all these granite boulders sort of around me, um, I feel like that's going to give me a little bit of protection from the horses, to be honest, because I feel like if I was to yeah, sort of tuck amongst like the the trees and stuff. Um, you're just gonna have horses sort of running around you all night, I reckon. So I figured if I can try and yeah tuck myself in this little flat patch just here. I just um, actually checked the weather report. Funnily enough, I get a few bars of reception up here, which is <laughs> surprising. Um, it says there's like a 50% chance of showers in the middle of the night, about midnight. The wind's meant to be pretty much how it is now so um, yeah barely any wind with a few little gusts like a few little breezes every now and then but it's meant to be um yeah sort of dropping off through the night but yeah it's meant to be a few little showers potentially but tomorrow is meant to be yeah pissing down but I think that's not meant to happen until about after lunch time so I think I could probably yeah maybe string up a, a pretty simple little tarp shelter and then yeah just roll out swag in that and I think it'd be a, a pretty epic spot to yeah, camp for the night. Winds are picking up a little bit, which is a little bit concerning, but I, don't know, I think it'll pass. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, so here's my swag. Man, such a good little size, eh? Like, so that contains all my sleep gear. It's got my quilt, it's got my pillow, it's got my mat, and it's got my bivy. So, pretty compact little size. So we'll just roll this out. Alright, so I think I'm just going to do a pretty simple plow point. Um, that way it's sort of good protection from any wind direction. And also, yeah, it gives you plenty of coverage if it does rain. Since the weather's fine, I think I might just um, have this flap open. That way I can sort of get to the bivy if I need to. There's no real need to have that down just yet unless it starts raining. You guys can see that, but there's a pretty sure it's a dingo just down there. Real pale dingo. Man, that was pretty cool. You can still hear the dingo in the distance. So there's that dingo there, there's also one on the other side of the valley, and you they're um, sort of howling to each other. But yeah, I've never really sort of encountered that before. I've only seen uh, two dingoes. One was yesterday, actually, when I was driving in on the fire trail. And I saw one a couple of weeks ago, also on a fire trail as well. But I've never seen one when I've actually been out in the bush camping. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, as long as he keeps his distance. <laughs> the last thing I want is a, yeah, a pack of dingoes coming up and bugging me while I sleep. Or maybe a, 
yeah, pack of brumbies either. It's a lot of wildlife out here, eh? So, <laughs> gotta be a bit careful of it all. I think that's what makes this place so cool is like you just got kangaroos bouncing around everywhere, wild horses, there's rabbits galore, there's rabbits absolutely everywhere, um, dingoes, rivers full of trout, well apparently they're full of trout, <laughs> I can't seem to get one but apparently they are, but yeah it's a pretty um, yeah, pretty special place out here, it's safe not to be a really nice afternoon, I'm definitely glad I sort of chose this campsite up here, it's just a really beautiful spot and gives you such a, a good outlook as well. There's a dingo again. Hopefully the audio is picking it up. <laughs> wow, pretty crazy. All right, well it's about 6.30. I think it's uh, time for a sunset bevy. Yeah, it's now just got the, the old vino. This is sent to me by a really nice bloke, um, a winemaker down in Barossa Valley who follows the channel. So, yeah, thanks, mate. Um, wish I could remember the name of the wine company. I'll put a, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen somehow so you guys can check it out. Cause yeah, it's bloody delicious. Hey, eh? really nice wine. All right, now the big question of the day: which rock to sit on? Some pretty nice rocks around here. I think that one might do me. Cause man, look at that view. Cannot be that. So yeah, I'm gonna sit on this rock, enjoy my red wine. Yeah, taking this amazing landscape. Oh, oh mate, this is a living. I'm in heaven right now. This place is bloody gorgeous. One stoked bloke right here. There's that wind. <laughs> Even though the fishing sucked today, it's still been a, yeah, a really nice day. I absolutely love this place, eh? Hey? This might be, become one of the top three favorites, I reckon. I've got a few of my top three, <laughs> but I go to some pretty amazing places, but this one is, um, yeah, this is like my kind of landscape. I just love this kind of country, eh? I just love the open grassy plains. I love the trees sort of coming down to meet the grassy plains, and then amongst the trees, it's nice, easy walking all these little granite outcrops and then just a, a beautiful river meandering its way through. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's something quintessentially Australian about this kind of landscape, especially when you've got the brumbies running around. Bloody man for snowy river kind of stuff. But yeah, this place has definitely um, yeah, beat every expectation. I had no intention of coming here up until, um, what, Thursday night? Yeah, just a, such a last minute decision. I was going to go to this other spot and then I just, I spent so much time looking at Google Maps and stuff and I just stumbled across this little valley here and I was like, that looks pretty cool. So, came to check it out and man, it um, yeah, definitely has produced the goods. Well, maybe not in terms of fishing, but in terms of scenery, it's, yeah, absolutely loving it. All right, well, I'm gonna enjoy my wine and I'll get back to you guys in a bit. I'll probably um, start cooking some dinner pretty soon.
Well, sure enough, as soon as I start cooking dinner, those clouds start rolling in. So I feel it's going to belt down any moment now. So let's see if we can try and finish dinner before it starts pouring. All right, well, I think this rain is going to be here in any moment. Oh, all right, well, the wild weather has finally hit me. The wind started to pick up and we got some pretty heavy rain clouds moving in. So I'm going to put the camera away now because it's a little bit too hard to film and um, cook at the same time with weather like this. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning. And it's getting pretty wild up here, eh? Pretty windy and yeah, some pretty decent rain. So that weather report was way off. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll probably see you guys in the morning. I might film a bit later, we'll see how we go. But yeah, I'll probably see you guys in the morning. I think I've fallen in love. This is such a, a beautiful landscape, eh? I could honestly like, sit here all day just looking at it. If I could build like a nice little timber hut, timber cabin up on this hill, I would be one happy man. It's just so nice just sitting here like watching the, the clouds and the sunlight move across the land and kangaroos jumping around and then the wild brumbies running around doing their thing. It's a pretty magical place. As much as like these wild brumbies are destructive um, up in this alpine region, they're still a very majestic animal just to sit and watch. And we definitely see arguments both ways about whether we keep them around or whether we cull them. Like on the one hand, um, this alpine region is a very fragile ecosystem, and it's pretty much the only one we've got in Australia. Um, so we've got to kind of protect it at all costs. But at the same time, these brumbies uh, have been up in the snows for the last sort of what, 100, 200 years kind of thing. Um, and yeah, they're just part of our sort of modern culture and history. So you can definitely see an argument both ways. And look, I don't have the answer to it. There's a lot smarter people than me trying to figure out the, the answer to this question. And it's just, yeah, a very divisive one. I'm not quite sure we'll really ever figure it out, to be honest. 
But I think it's about time we um, yeah, start packing camp down and then we'll, um, we'll go back down, we'll start making our way back and we'll um, yeah, go for a bit of a fish and fingers crossed we can land a fish. Well, this guy just scared the hell out of me. Just lift up my little tucker bag and he was underneath it. I'm not quite sure what spider he is. Kind of looks a bit like a wolf spider because his eyes are at the front and he's got that kind of marking on top of his head, but he's a lot darker in color than I'm usually used to seeing. So yeah, if you guys know what it is, feel free to let me know. Oh, he is creepy. Decent size, eh? Yes. Yes. We're on. Oh, it's a nice brown. Oh no, rainbow. Yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so stoked. Yeah. Oh man, what a beautiful little rainbow. <laughs> and what a gorgeous fish. Colors and the patterns on him are absolutely stunning. Alright, let's let him go. Let's let you go. There he goes. Phew! Oh man, so stoked with that. That was a well earned fish. After fishing for hours and hours yesterday and coming up empty handed, to, well, that was my fourth cast and to land that beautiful rainbow. Oh man, so stoked. Um, yeah, so nice to finally have one on the tally board. I was, would have been pretty disappointed if I went home empty handed this trip, so even if we just catch up one, I'm a yeah, pretty happy bloke. So anyway, let's um, make our way further river and we'll see if we have any more luck. Yes, oh, he is tiny. <laughs> wow, he is miniature. <laughs> he is absolutely adorable. All right, here you go, buddy. Grow up to be a nice, big, beautiful brown. Yes. We're on, oh, only a small guy. Oh, another tiny brown. Oh, okay, shook himself off. Shook himself off. I oh, know he's not. Still on. There you go. Gosh, these guys are cute. <laughs> I just wish they were a little bit bigger. <laughs> Let him go. See you, buddy. All right, it's getting close to lunch time, so I've only got a few casts left for me. I'm gonna have to call it quits. I just saw a fish come up to take the fly, but then he saw me and he got spooked. It was a good size as well. Yes. There we go. There we go. Alright, 
well, I think this is going to be the last little section I'm going to fish. So, yeah, after lunchtime, so I could just start getting out of here. Ah, oh, damn it. Just had a fish, have a go at it. I think that one fish that's there is now spooked, fortunately. All right, well, I think it's about time we call it. It's uh, well after lunchtime and I've got a long drive ahead of me, eh? like six hours easily. So I think it's about time we hit the road. Uh, so yeah, I've had such a sick time. This has been such a fun trip. Um, even though the fishing was painfully slow yesterday, uh, it's nice to see this morning start to produce the goods and yeah that uh that rainbow trout that first one was an absolute cracker so very stoked with that so yeah hope you guys enjoyed it as well if you guys did enjoy it um and you haven't subscribed already please uh do i'd love for you guys to help me crack the 100k and also if you guys got some enjoyment of this video and like to support the channel then feel free to check out my patreon link which is in the description below so yeah anyway until next time guys Hooroo.